Of J. Gresham Machen's many fine works, none have achieved the popularity of Christianity and liberalism. It was published near the peak of the fundamentalist modernist controversy of the early 20th century, and it remains a foundational text for understanding that period of church history. But the book's reputation today is not so much due to its historical significance as to its enduring call to believers to remain true to the core doctrines of Christianity despite demands to compromise from both the world and from the institutional church. At the beginning of the 20th century, Protestantism in, in American culture was in, ser in serious decline. Social forces like immigration, industrialization, urbanization were transforming the culture while new intellectual challenges like Darwinism and theological liberalism were defying long-standing tenets of the Christian faith. Historically powerful Protestant denominations, including Machen's own Protestant, uh, excuse me, Presbyterian Church in the United States of America, the PCUSA, were increasingly marginalized. To maintain their relevance, many in these denominations de-emphasized their commitment to historic Christian doctrines like the bodily resurrection of Jesus and instead focused on the more culturally palatable Christian ethic. These liberals or modernists pushed for an inclusive church that accommodated those with widely differing beliefs rather than requiring strict adherence to creeds like the Westminster Standards. One manifestation of this trend was a desire for Protestant ecumenism as proposed in the 1920 Plan of Union, which would have formed significant bonds between major Protestant denominations in the United States. As a delegate to the 1920 General Assembly of the PCUSA, Machen strongly opposed the Plan of Union on the grounds that it would undermine Presbyterian distinctives and compromise the denomination's commitment to the Westminster Standards and the Reformed faith more generally. His vocal opposition contributed in some small part to the eventual failure of the plan and raised his profile as an emerging conservative leader. This led to speaking engagements, including one in late 1921 entitled Liberalism or Christianity, in which Machen identified liberalism not as a faction within Christianity, but rather a different religion altogether. The speech was well received by his conservative audience, so Machen decided to expand the speech into a short book with a similar outline. To do so, he drew on several of his previously published writings. One was History and Faith, a 1915 speech in which Machen argues for the centrality of history, especially the history of the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, uh, the importance of the centrality of that history in the Christian faith. This theme is found throughout Christianity and liberalism, but particularly in chapters 2 on doctrine, 4 on the Bible, 5 Christ, and 6 Salvation. Another significant source for the book was The Origin of Paul's Religion, uh, published in 1921, in which Machen critiques various anti-supernatural attempts to explain away Paul's radical transformation from Pharisee to outspoken follower of Jesus Christ. Material from this book appears primarily in chapters 2 and 5 to make this case that Christianity is a religion founded on doctrine, particularly the doctrine of the supernatural character of Jesus Christ. As he wrote, Machen also took the opportunity to speak to the latest developments in the era's political and religious debates. For example, he discusses his concern at what he sees as the, inc the increasing encroachment of the government uh, over the education of children. He also references statements of leading proponents of liberalism, most notably Harry Emerson Fosdick. The final draft of the book was published in 19 was was submitted to the publisher in 1922, late 1922, and then published in early 1923. In all, Christianity and Liberalism contains seven chapters. The first chapter, the introduction, uh, in, in that chapter, Machen suggests that modern science, for all its benefits, is anti-spiritual and utilitarian. In chapter two on doctrine, he argues that true Christianity is founded on historical facts and the interpretations of those facts and cannot be modified at will. The third chapter is entitled God and Man, and here he argues that true Christianity rests on a proper understanding of God and mankind and the chasm that is created between them by sin. In chapter 4 on the Bible, he argues that Christianity on one hand and liberalism on the other rest on completely different authorities. Chapter 5 is on Christ, 
And he argues there that while liberals seem to regard Christ very highly in the ways that they speak, they make him a mere human example, not as a supernatural object of faith, as in true Christianity. Chapter 6 on salvation is a defense of the historic reform doctrines of atonement and redemption. Uh, chapter 7 on the church is a call for rooting out liberalism in the church and defending the truth. Upon release, the book was rather unheralded. Sales were, were fairly slow, but this changed when Machen found himself at the center of a controversy. He was serving as stated supply at the First Presbyterian Church in Princeton, New Jersey in late 1923, and in that role he regularly emphasized the errors of liberalism in his sermons. Eventually, one prominent member of the church, Henry Van Dyke, who was a former U.S. ambassador to the Netherlands and to Luxembourg, uh, he had enough and with great fanfare gave up his pew in the church. The resulting press coverage raised Machen's profile and sales of Christianity and liberalism quadrupled in 1924 over the previous year. Naturally, the book appealed to fundamentalists who appreciated the intellectual acumen that Machen brought to bolster their case against theological liberalism. But Machen's focus on defending central Christian doctrines, rather than fundamentalist distinctives like premillennialism, creationism, and temperance, widened his audience and earned him positive reviews from many disinterested and even secular observers. Not surprisingly, his opponents responded less favorably, often taking his negative portrayal of liberalism as a personal attack, despite Machen's attempts to focus on the belief system, not its individual proponents. Christianity and liberalism has now firmly established itself not only as a central text for understanding the fundamentalist modernist controversy, but also as a classic defense of historic Christian orthodoxy. Many of Machen's concerns and arguments continue to be relevant to the church today, and his clear style makes the book quite readable nearly a hundred years later. As a result, it remains highly regarded in evangelical circles, being named not only one of the top 100 books of the 20th century by Christianity Today, but also one of the top 100 books of the millennium by World Magazine. So my question to you is, have you read it? Have you read Christianity and Liberalism? I hope you will. It's available free online because it's in the public domain. I'd encourage you to take a look at it. In future videos on this channel, uh, we'll go through some of the themes and, and perhaps challenging parts of the book uh, in, an, in an effort to uh, make the book even easier for modern readers to understand. I hope you'll follow along on this channel, subscribe, and like this video if you can. Thanks for watching.